you talk about weight loss, it's usually a case of cutting calories and increasing exercise. But with the obesity rates climbing, the problem may really go far deeper. So could food addiction be to blame? Over the last two decades, obesity rates have dramatically increased. According to the CDC, more than one-third of U.S. adults are obese. Childhood obesity has more than tripled in the past 30 years. National ads depict the growing problem. I don't like going to school because all the other kids pick on me. Mom? Why am I fat? In response, there have been controversial efforts to cut the fat. First, it was a ban on artery-clogging trans fats. Then calories were posted on menus. Next, an assault on salt. And in the latest effort to downsize our waistlines, a proposal to outlaw the sale of supersized sweetened drinks. But are those efforts in vain if the issue isn't what or how much we eat, but why? And that's what we're going to delve into this morning. With us uh, this morning is psychologist Sumathi Gupta and uh, registered dietitian Dana James. Ladies, thank you for being with us this morning to help us understand this addiction better. Because we hear about all the ad other addictions, and it seems like we're hearing more and more about food addiction. Now, is that because it's really happening more, or just people, you know, throwing that term around more loosely, Dr. Gupta? Well, there, I think there is increasing awareness, but yeah, like you said, the term isn't actually, it's not a psychological term, medical term, it's more a term that's used in everyday language that you're hinting at. Yeah, and, and is that a good or bad thing? Dana, what do you think in this day and age when somebody says, oh, you know, I just ate so much, I gorge, I, you know, I think I, I have, I've got to have this food addiction, I must have some kind of psychological problem. Well, I think there's two pieces to it. There is a psychological piece to it, which comes from a spir uh, spiritual and emotional void, and there's also a biochemical piece that comes from eating sugar and carbs hydrates and that changes the brain chemistry so and we don't give that a lot of credence so let's talk about that let's 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 um, you know separate what we have here people who yes they want to go you know binge and they had a bad day my boyfriend broke up with me you have the you know cliche you know gallon of ice cream right there and a true true food addiction where is that difference made doctor well, um, we can both speak to different aspects of it. One thing I wanted to mention is binge eating disorder. So that's an actual disorder um, in which people are eating abnormally large amounts of food and feeling a real loss of control. Okay. Um, and that affects a small percentage of the population, and there are treatments for that. So would you say that an eating disorder is very, very different from a food addiction? Yes. And that's that tells the difference. Yes. So an eating disorder is much more psychological, whereas a food addiction can be very, very mild. Mm -hmm. And again, it can be induced by just eating sugar and carbohydrates which then when you eat and when you eat a cookie or ice cream it's very challenging to just have one bite of right, it right. like you're like oh my goodness I need to eat the entire cookie or the entire packet and that's because the sugar and the carbohydrates really does change the brain okay. chemistry and a food addiction doesn't necessarily need to mean, mean obesity in any sense not like at all you can have the thinnest fittest person who has a food addiction mm -hmm. yeah people are binge eating and you look at them and you would never guess that it's something they're doing alone at night mm -hmm. and what is behind that what it would need to delve behind that you know as far as the true meaning of a, of a food addiction you know what can people look for I think it's really how do we fix it and one yeah. is separating the food from our feelings as a starting point and then two really cutting out the carbohydrates mm -hmm. and the sugar like like an alcoholic it's it's really abstinent so if you if you eat the sugar and the, right. and the carbohydrates then you are going to trigger that response ladies hopefully that'll help us and people out there dealing with what they may believe is an actual addiction to food thank you very much uh, dr. Samathi Gupta and Dana James to learn more about food addiction and where you can help log on to pix11.com morning news and